All right. So now I guess this is probably part two of the video because we're going to do the painting now. I'm going to show you what we're going to do and how we're going to do this. We're going to do this outside, but first we need to mask off a few things. So if you haven't seen part one of the video, you know, definitely go back and watch it where I explain the paint job on this one, uh, my progression to the paint job on this rifle, and what we're going to do with this one. And now we're actually getting to the paint job. I spent the last video explaining all the parts from tip to butt on this guy. Now we're going to look at the logistics of painting this guy. So if you want to know what the parts are on it, check part one of the video. All right. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to tape off the flash hider just because it's tradition. It's just something I do. It doesn't matter. Trust me, the first bolt that flies through there, <laughs> it'll blow everything out. But I tape off the flash hider anyway. We are definitely going to be taping off. Yeah, I've got, it's got a, flip, a cheap flip up site here, but we're definitely just going to be taping off this part here. This flashlight, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's an Enforced WML. This is an expensive flashlight. I have an idea for this. What I'm going to do is I've got some rubber gloves over here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to cut a finger off one of the rubber gloves and just sheath the whole flash. I don't want to take it off. I really don't want to arse with taking it off because it's not your typical little twisty. It's got a, I guess that's how it comes off. I'm just going to put a freaking finger off the rubber glove on here because the paint job we're going to do, I, I, I guess I didn't tell you guys this. I told you guys in the last video, we're going to be using this. What we're going to do is we're going to do a blood splatter paint job on this. It's going to have a whole blood splatter effect on it. And I know it's not very stealthy, right? Well, guess what? I, I, I think an intimidating rifle could actually cut down on violent interdictions rather than having it stealthy. If you follow my thinking, um, the main idea is to not have to fire a rifle and a rifle that looks like this. Well, this is actually a pistol. It's only got an 11 inch barrel, a pistol that looks like this as intimidating as this is with a blood splatter paint job. I think I run a lot lower risk of having to fire it. Trust me. Criminals are in the business because they want to make easy money and an easy money does not mean having this fucking thing pointed at you. And this thing will look evil when we're done. That's the whole point. This thing is pure. This thing is going to be solid, like black metal, like Norwegian black metal fucking evil when we're done with it. You'll see. All right. So I'm going to cut a finger off this glove and like a condom, <laughs> basically make a, make, a, make a little condom around the, the flashlight here. We're going to, I'm going to take off this paracord. I show you it. I showed you in the last video, how this paracord winded through the handguard. I'm just going to snap this off. I'm going to rewind the paracord. I could actually honestly do the paracord better. Oh, injection ports open. Cause I just, um, I was working with the, with the action in the last video. Oh yeah. So we're going to put a piece of tape just around the ejection port just for good luck. Not that it'll matter. The first round that goes through there will blow out anything that's in there, but we're going to put a piece of tape over the ejection port because we're doing a splatter paint job. So it's going to be really easy to mask this. Now, normally I don't mask things like the magazine release, safety lever, charging handle, uh, bolt catch. Normally I don't mask things like that because trust, because I didn't mask this rifle. Everything still works fine. Oh, it won't go in safety because it's not charged this way. Anyway, um, but in this case, we are going to mask some of this stuff because, uh, as, as you notice, the safety, which is on both sides is anodized red as is the magazine release and the charging handle. And I don't want to fuck that up because that's, it's beautiful. So here's what we're going to do. Oh, and then on the back on the pistol brace, we're going to remove this Velcro strap. Now I'm going to go pretty heavy red. I think here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do some neat tricks on this uh, painting. These other two rifles. I have learned a lot about painting rifles guys. Like this one was totally amateur. My first one, you can see how quickly the paint wore, especially on the cheek wheel, on the pistol grip and where I grab it up forward. This one, not so much. This one, I put way more paint. This one has several layers of paint. That way, once it wears down, it'll wear, it's just kind of dark green right now, but as this thing wears, like as it gets more wear, it's going to wear down. There's two other colors underneath that and the camel will like come out of it. Like I've learned what I'm doing over time. So with this one, I'm going to go, pistol grips are really bad about holding paint because they're kind of rubbery. They're going to wear off. It's going to wear off pretty quick. 
So what I'm going to do is an, eff uh, an effect that actually did on this one. See on the magazine here how the paint's all faded? Um, I used a cool trick there with my rubber gloves by smearing the paint with my hands. And that's the effect that's going to happen on this pistol grip. So I'm going to hit this pistol grip a little harder red than the rest of it because it's going to wear the fastest and it's going to wear naturally and it'll just, again, we're doing a blood splatter effect. And you'll see me work the rubber glove some on this. So that said, I'm going to go ahead. Yeah, I, oh yeah, I'm... I introed in the first part of the video. I didn't say in this part of the video. Okay, so I'm in my wood shop. I'm in my wood shop. This is not where I'm painting. I'm going to be painting it outside. The reason I'm filming this inside is because it's too windy outside uh, for the microphone. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my camera on the tripod here. And we're going to get to work on masking this thing off. I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it if I can get my camera mounted right. There we go. All right, so hopefully you guys can see this. I got the camera set up back on the tripod. Here's what we're gonna do. The first thing we're gonna do is we've already taken off the sling. We've already removed the sling. That's something you wanna do for sure. Um, I forgot to grab a knife. Hang on, I think I have one. I'm gonna cut this paracord off because we're gonna redo the paracord anyway. So I'm just gonna cut.
So that's the first stage of the painting done. Now I'm sorry if there's some wind noise, there may be. I'm in one of my outbuildings now and the, the whole front of this is open. It's windy here. As you saw when I was painting, you saw my stencil like blowing everywhere. That's how friggin' windy it is here just every day. That is, I'm quite happy with the paint job. And there's things you gotta take into consideration because I've done this before, like I, like I showed you. you know, I've done several rifle paint jobs before. I know what to expect. The rifle looks really red right now, but I hit it the hardest in the places where I know it's gonna wear. Cheek weld, pistol grip, hand grip, that's where it's gonna wear the fastest, so that's where I hit it the hardest with red. Also on the rail, remember all those accessories are taped, a lot of that shit's taped off, and when I put the sight back on there, that's gonna be black, it's really gonna even it out. I've done this before. That is the most evil looking fucking rifle I have ever seen in my life. The, uh, the upside down crosses on the magazines, that's just pure black fucking metal. <laughs> and that's all there is to that, that's just pure black fucking metal. The thing is, there is a tact there is a slight tactical side to that. And it's like I said before, I think I said this before, um, the ideal situation in any firearm engagement is to not have to fire it. And um, a weapon that looks that intimidating, I actually have maybe like a 5% less chance, hey, but it's something, of not having to fire it. Because anyone who sees that thing coming at them knows whoever's holding it means fucking business, or they should. And... Um, there's that. Also, I like black metal. I wanted to make it all black metal. Bloody with upside down crosses. Uh, so sue me on that one. I'm not religious in any way whatsoever. It's just black metal, you know. Uh, sorry to ramble on about that. Right now, I'm waiting for the paint to dry. Now, luckily, I live in the desert. I know it's only like May 2nd or some crap like that, but it's 90 degrees outside. We got a, we got a good wind. It's 90 degrees. There's not a cloud in the sky. This paint should dry pretty quick. Pretty quick. I'm going to wait about an hour. I'm going to clear cloak this bitch, and it's only like 4 o'clock or 4.30 or something right now, so I should have enough time, enough sunlight to wait another couple hours for the clear coat to dry, and still not ready to handle. I don't want to handle it until like after like 24 hours, but it'll, another hour, so like an hour of this, and then maybe like an hour of clear coat, and then it'll at least be enough to handle it and put it back up in my rack and show you guys the finished product, and then a day or two from now, I feel comfortable handling it. I want to make sure the clear coat is nice and slick. I've done clear coat twice on rifles before, so I kind of know how it goes. We're going to see how it goes. All right, guys, I will catch you guys in about an hour once this paint dries and I'm comfortable to clear coat it. Ah, oh, shit. difficulties there again the wind was very strong as you saw that's why I was having I was having to hold the can so close uh, just now I did the second uh, clear coating luckily it's like 90 degrees it's like 90 degrees there's a lot of wind and very low humidity so this is gonna dry super fast and we'll catch up uh, I'll wait probably 24 hours and apparently that wind broke my camera because it keeps turning off on me. Apparently when my camera blew over, it broke. So yay, another piece of equipment I have to buy. This is why YouTubers have Patreons. Please do check the link below for the Patreon. I can't keep this camera on for more than 10 seconds at a time. Please support the channel through Patreon if you can. All right, guys, so the whole paint job is finished. I had some camera problems there. I think, sorry, I think when my camera fell over, it kind of broke a little bit. It's okay, so hopefully we can keep this in, in one thing here. So the rifle's done. The uh, Let's get it in frame here. The clear coat is done. Everything is done on it. Now, one thing I did is, you notice I painted the pistol grip like solid red. Also over here in the cheek weld, solid red, because these two places are going to wear the fastest. Let's see if we can get a little closer. What I was going for was, well, I was going for... I know the lighting in here is really bright. Here, today I'm in my garage. Yeah, now I'm in my garage. I was in, I'm in, I've been in different buildings. Now I'm in the garage. The acoustics still aren't great. The lighting is not the best. Trust me, in normal lighting, this thing's actually really splotchy, red and black. Here, let's take it off. Um, it 
it's actually really splotchy red and black on um, both sides even though it's hard to see with this harsh light and uh, the grip is solid red and the cheek weld here is solid red because these are going to wear the fastest it'll bring it down to a splotchy thing so here it is with a clear coat and everything again uh, totally heavy metal it's not let me get back in the frame here it's nothing against, I know it has an inverted cross on it. It's nothing against Christianity, as I've already had some comments on. No, it's because I like black fucking metal. <laughs> this is a heavy, I, it, 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 it's just all about black fucking metal. Yeah, guys, I'm so sorry about that. My camera keeps cutting out. I'm pretty sure that it broke when it fell over earlier. I'm pretty sure something on the battery broke, so I'm having to recharge it like every five minutes. Um, <laughs> speaking of which, if you would like to support the channel, which is something we do desperately need for things like this. Uh, go ahead and check the link to uh, the Patreon in the description below to help support the channel with whatever you can, whatever you feel, it's all up to you. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and sign off. One thing I think I was trying to say, uh, this is not, I know it has an upside down cross on it, it's not anti-Christian, it's just, I, I like heavy metal. There's two ways to go with rifles. One way is camouflage, and one way was, well, okay, there's three ways. One way is just outright just regular. The other way is intimidation. Now, I think anyone who's ever had to fire a rifle will agree that a good day is a day you don't have to fire a weapon. Good day is a day you don't have to fire a weapon. And I think, this is just my own personal philosophy, I think that intimidation is in that, of course, just as good as camouflage. This weapon looks fucking intimidating and evil as hell. Um, after that, this, um, I have a less likely chance of having to discharge this weapon upon a target. That's a good day. Anyone who's used a weapon will agree it's a good day. So, that is just something new I've tried. I, I've just kind of started trying. Like, I have rifles painted camouflage, have rifles painted this and that. This one, I was like... Let's go full intimidation. Let's go full red and black blood splatters and, and upside down cross. Also, because I just I just love black metal. To be fair, I wanted to do a pentagram on the magazine, but the painstaking process it would have taken to stencil that on both sides of every magazine I have would have taken me hours. Because yeah, I stenciled this on every single mag that I have. And this took long enough. Um, so the pentagram is kind of out of the question. So I was like, what else symbolizes black metal that I could put on here? It's just a heavy metal guy thing, guys. I don't care about religion. I, I, I really don't care about religion whatsoever. Uh, I just want to put that out there because I know some people have been already remarked that they were offended or something by this. It's, it's just heavy metal, guys. All right, so that's it. Thanks so much for watching the painting of this rifle. Painting a rifle is actually really, really freaking easy. You can pretty much spray over everything. I overtake this thing a lot, and that's because... This light is really expensive, and you definitely want to tape over your sights. I tape over my muzzle brake, just my muzzle device, just for good luck. I tape over the ejection port. That doesn't really doesn't matter. I never tape over my trigger or my bolt catch. None of that matters, guys. Trust me. I got like four coats of paint and clear coat on the other AR, and it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. You can paint over pretty much everything. These things are tough, dude. Remember, these things are tough. They're made of metal. If paint fucks something up, guess what? Just strip the paint back off. It's made of metal. It won't break. I think I think some people are too careful when they paint their ARs or too cautious about it. That's it. Again, like I said before earlier, uh, yeah, yeah. It's really dark right here and really dark red right here. This will wear down. This is the part that's going to wear down the fastest. The cheek weld, the pistol grip. And everything on the handguard where I'm actually grabbing it, that's going to wear down the fastest. And I planned that when I painted this because this is my third rifle painting job now. So I planned that and I should get a nice speckledy, once this starts wearing, they'll start kind of chipping off and wearing. I know how they wear now. It'll look like really cool blood splatter. And the point of this rifle was to make it cool and evil looking. And it, yeah, paint your rifle however you want. This is how I painted mine. I fucking love it. It's so heavy metal. It's just so absolute heavy metal. Guys, thanks so much for watching. I am Dark Dally. I'm going to catch you guys next time.